This lecture is going to be on project management, the Gantt chart, and sorting out uh, task info. Now, if you're used to project management software, things like Microsoft Project, then this may come across as a little bit simplistic. But if you really want a basic, very easy to use, integrated project management system with a Gantt chart just to show you where your projects are and who's assigned to them, etc., etc., then the Gantt chart on XMind is very good. So let's have a look at it. One of the first things to do is to have a look at the preferences. And under task info, we can have people assigned to different jobs. So if I want to add someone like Colin, uh, add, and uh, Peter maybe, Um, then we can apply these in the task info section under preferences. We can add assignees. So you'll see where this, uh, where this matters in a few seconds. The other thing is that your task info, your Gantt chart and your project management is based on task info. So there's a task info facility here. Now, the first thing to point out is that every sheet uh, like all these sheets at the bottom, can have their own task info and can have their own Gantt chart and project management section. You can't have more than one Gantt chart within a sheet, if you see what I mean. I'm going to demonstrate the project management facility on the in the planning section. So if we just go into this mind map here, and this is a revisit, so you sh you should be able to recognize uh, some of this. And this is based off our Udemy Teach link, which I explained here, but we can click into it, have a quick look, just to remind ourselves how fantastically useful these hyperlinks are. So we've got planning, producing, publishing, promoting, etc. The The Gantt chart and the project management is all based around information you will put in on task info, uh, task info properties, uh, for each section. And the way you can do that is to right click on a particular section and go down to task info and you can see it's only in the pro version and you click on it and you get task planning information here. Now if you're using this a lot I just want to show you very quickly that if you go into edit and preferences and look up task info Uh, under show view task info, we want to put in a an accelerator key. So I would normally go Control Shift T, and I put this, and it's it, when it's when we're in Windows, and we just apply this. So it's just a shortcut key we can apply to um, our task info. So the first thing we can do is yeah, click on planning. This time we're going to just do Control Shift T, and we can enter an assignee. And we've set up some already, so this job's going to be for Peter. We don't have to have assignees at all. We're going to set it to priority one, planning. We can set a start time. And today is February, and our little uh, today's date is in orange. The other dates are in different colors, but today's date is orange. But we'll start tomorrow, Tuesday. And our duration is, we're going to say, uh, a couple of days for the planning. So let's say three days for the planning. And we've got some other information here. We can do end dates, the amount of progress, and uh, checkpoints, and other information. But if we just enter this at the moment, we can just click off the task. And you can see we've got a little icon that shows that we have task info in here. If we do producing, we can go Control shift t And the producing part we can assign to somebody else. Let's do it to Tony. Select priority, we'll put it as priority two. Start time, let's maybe say the third, and duration, two days. And progress checkpoint we don't need, and we click off here. So again, here we've got a little icon for task info, another little icon for task info. And at this stage, what we can do is just have a quick look at our Gantt chart. And you can see that under planning, we have from the second, in fact, we had uh, from the second to the third planning, and under producing, we can have from the third to the fourth. Now, underneath planning, what we can do is we can assign uh, task info actually on the Gantt chart itself. So if I double click on here, 
I can get a, a task info, decide what to teach, we're going to put up here. We're going to assign it to somebody else, Colin here, maybe priority three. Uh, start time is the second and duration. This time we're just going to do it in, in hours and maybe we have four hours for this one. And we just click off it and there we have it. Now at the moment we've got this for each month um, and we can make these, we can just drag them out. If we hover over them we can see exactly who's assigned to them and what dates and what priority. Now we can hover over them obviously and just drag them out if we want to make them a few extra few days longer we can just move these along as we as we need to at the moment what we have we have this set up our scale is set up to days now our timeline we can have in days uh, days of the week weeks or hours now to get a bit more detail if we can put it, this on hours you can see that everything has extended a little bit longer so maybe decide what to teach needs to come we'll just start that there and our next one we can just put in here and we've just double clicked on here and we can just drag this in and what I want to do is make sure that one is finished before the other so now we're on hours we don't want to start this at midnight so we'll just bring this to uh, an approximate working hours and which means we'll start this one and working hours as well but we want to make sure that this one is finished before this next one who's going to watch my video is started so the way we can do this is just pick this up and drag it to the front here and it immediately pulls this to the front so because we've got a dependency here if we double click on who's going to watch my course and we come down we have a predecessor, so decide what to, what to teach and finish to start. And we can just extend this a little bit. Because I've put a predecessor in here, however hard I try to move this down, because this has to finish before this one starts, it'll always jump back. I'm just in grey here, so I can just double click on here to get up task info again. Now at the moment I don't have much, I've just double clicked on here, so I've just created a, a task against uh, who's going to watch my course. Um, I can extend this a little bit so we can have a bit more detail. And I can put a bit more detail in just by double clicking on here and I will get task info up. And I can assign this to somebody else uh, like Tony. And select, select priority six, have a quick look at that. So if I go back to days, we can see that we've got the planning here, we've got producing, but within planning, if we go down to a closer view on the timeline, we can see what needs to be done first and who's been assigned to it. I can move this along. Before I start producing, I want my planning to be complete. So again, I can just drag this arrow and I can just make sure that this is definitely complete before, so I can't bring this back here, it'll just pop through and you can see how that works. Really that is pretty much it in terms of the Gantt chart, but a nice way of planning it out and you can assign different things. Some of the downsides at the moment, and I think XMind are working on them, is that at the moment the colour differences are just assigned to priorities. So you can see on this one I've got a priority two if I hover over and this one I've got priority one if I hover over and these are priority six. Now what would be nice in future versions is to have different colors for different assignees. So a different color for Peter and a different color for Tony for example. But at the moment we can just change the colors or we can have all the colors the same and each is assigned, each of these bars is assigned to the um, planning that's gone on here. Now you can you can also see because I double clicked on the Gantt chart I actually edited this in here. We'll go just go back to hours so we can actually see this with a little bit more detail. If on goals for example I can just drag one out here and if I double click I can also just make it a, a check mark which is you'll see uh, if I just put a checkpoint in here this is just 
it's it's not an area it's just a checkpoint on goals and I can just put this wherever I want so I can have a look and these little triangles are checkpoints now again on on any of these if I decide what to teach I've started this already if I do a progress you'll just see a slight change of color 48% through and we've got two tones of color on this one and on who's going to watch my course I can also put progress and you'll see there's a percentage progress uh, with two different tones of the same color on each of those. So there it is, it prints out nicely. You can see as I put these bits of information into the Gantt chart itself, I'm also getting uh, icons for the task info in actually on my mind map itself. So I can click on here and I can see the task info for decide what to teach. So I hope that makes it clear and uh, I hope that can be useful. If you're planning a big project and you've got several people assigned to different tasks or you just want to plan out your tasks for the next few weeks, then this is a great way of doing it. Obviously, you can do it in Excel spreadsheets. You can do it in Microsoft Project and other quite heavy project management uh, tools. But in terms of simplicity and the fact that it integrates beautifully into your dashboard, makes this a fantastic piece of functionality in XMind itself. So we'll see you in the next section.